everyone. I am about to start um, my achromatic painting for my brand identity. Um, just a little recap. We were gonna start by filling out our worksheet, coming up with a brand, and mine is Ephemeral Blooms. Um, my creation or my product is to capture the florals and colors of a special day by creating paintings of bride's bouquets. Um, my client is a DFW bride with moderate to expensive budget. She's stylish, young, expensive, and detail-oriented. And my tagline is fleeting florals, cotton time, or catching fleeting florals, or fleeting florals, something like that. Um, I did some research of some other artists. I came up with a color plan for my next painting. Um, I had my static designs and my dynamic that I started out, um, and then I looked at some other examples of other designs and I revised two of my static and two of my dynamic for some options. And then I landed on this one for my static, which I'm gonna create in achromatic black and white and gray painting. So I'll start that here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna mix up my palette again. I have my water, a towel, um, some of my brushes, and I have my black and white paint. Let me get started here. I'm gonna do like I did before where I put one side of the palette is my 100 and the other side is my zero. I'm gonna label them just so that I can keep myself organized. I'll mix a 70 and a 30 and then I can be able to kind of mix some of the more complexities in between. I need to grab my white. I'm squirting out um, about the size of a Hershey Kiss or a little bigger. I might have to get more as I go. Okay. I'm going to use my palette knife to start to make a 50. I'm going to try and grab enough to get me started. I'm going to wipe my um, palette knife off in between so that I'm not contaminating my white. I'm going to try and do about the same amount, half. And then I try to squish the paints back and forth into a little pile back and forth. Maybe I'll try and do it slow. Squish, squish, squish. I'm not trying to stir it. I'm trying to mush the two different values together. I'm gonna grab a little of that, move it to my 70. I'm gonna grab some more black. And if you spend your time making a nice palette to start with, the painting will be a lot easier. the gray, grab some of the white. And then I have a pretty good value range to start and I can keep mixing as I go. Okay, wipe off my palette knife just in case I need it in a second. Um, and I'm going to reference some of the little works that I made earlier. Um, this one I had started with a wet wash in the background. This I had a really kind of um, painterly um, palette knife approach. This was very slow and carefully painted out. This was where I taped it and then did a watercolor wash. So 
the idea with these was to find some marks that you really liked. I liked when I rolled my brush. Um, this kind of ombre effect was nice. So that you have a plan for how you might go ahead and start this. I think what I'm gonna start with is um, kind of what I mentioned before. Start with the most boring, the negative, the background, the thing that doesn't matter, um, the biggest, and then work your way up. Not always, but sometimes it's good to work dark to light, but I that comes and goes depending on what you want your background to be. But I think starting with the negative and the behind and the big sets the tone and the temperament. So look through your tests, remind yourself about what you like to create in these um, so that you can kind of make a plan on how to go about it. You might end up using Sharpie or other felt tip pens or gel pens, little marks, um, and kind of make a plan. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to start with building out my negative space and thinking of my my client, I want it to be really light and fluffy and um, soft. So I'm gonna actually start, I think, with my white. I'm gonna hand cut my outer edge. I'm gonna paint it pretty quickly because I knew I liked like some of these more kind of painterly um, sections where I put a little bit of gray in it. So I'm just trying to coat the surface as quick as I can, get some more white. I put out like another chocolate chip size I know I'm going to paint into those in a bit with some petals. So I'm just trying to put a first fast layer of white down and it's pretty chunky because I'm gonna cut a little bit of a different value into it to make it atmospheric. So now I'm gonna grab some of my 30. And this is gonna hopefully help create that kind of ephemeral feel that I'm looking for for my brand. and to create a kind of atmosphere. I might go a little darker as I get close to my curved edge. And I'm trying to paint this like kind of wet on wet, but it just got a little sticky. So I'm gonna um, dip my brush in a little bit of water, just a little, just so it starts to move a little better. A little more water. And I want it to have like a, a bit of complexity. I don't want it to be the same gray all over. I might add a little more white to brighten up a spot. Uh, can you let me finish my video? Okay, we'll come look at it in a second. Okay, so I did my outer section um, kind of painterly and gestural, and then I'm going to come move in to this next section. And I think I want to go one shade darker, but not a whole 30. So I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of that gray.
and I might make it kind of thin. Um, so I'm gonna maybe add a little water to my palette just to thin it out a little. And since it's fairly watercolory, I can go right over my drawing and still see it. I'm actually reshaping my rectangle and kind of pushing that paint out of the way. I'm gonna go around my circle So I'm just kind of making it super atmospheric, a little more water, so it's real thin. Go around my circle again. Notice that I'm using a big, super fat, flat brush, and I actually get to have more control because I can control that pressure and watch if it starts to um, pull away from the edge or, like if I tried to do it like this, it'd actually be harder. It's by using it on its side that I can control that pressure a little better. It's my cheap brushes coming apart on me, sorry. One more little pull here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I might come in and do another dark line or I might adjust some of the values back in here. Um, the section that I wanna work on before I work on my figure, being the flowers, the positive shape, is this negative space back behind the flowers and some of what is gonna happen in this stripe. I'm not actually sure what's gonna happen with the stripe yet. That might just be lines. Um, going through it. So I think what I might do is I had light and then a little darker and I think I'm going to do white in here again. I'm just going to go a little bit in between my petals, mostly just to get the board um, covered with a little pigment fairly quickly. And then that's going to allow me to paint my petals in a kind of gestural, painterly kind of way. Um, that I can activate. And I learned that in some of my little painting studies that that was how I wanted to build the space. So I'm just kind of putting in a little bit, making sure it's pretty wet. I'm gonna work fairly quickly as the acrylic dries. Okay, so that is, drying pretty quickly because it's the raw paper. I'm gonna do one more little pass to make it kind of wet and active for my darks. I have my photo reference of my friend's flowers. She gave me permission to use these. I'm gonna have them a little close so that I can be thinking about maybe where I would have a highlight, a middle, and a dark. A highlight, a middle, and a dark. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to think in that 150 zero shift and then let the paint work in between to get some of the um, subtle value shifts. So I'll have that here nearby. So here is where I think I'm going to shift to getting into some of my darks to lay down first in the back of the florals. Um, might switch to a different brush. I'm gonna still use a fairly large flat brush. Um, again, I'm gonna kind of reference my photo and kind of get myself grounded. So like here is this um, 
little figure here and I can see these nice rich darks. So I'm gonna pull in some darks here. I'm gonna kind of double load my brush with a little of the 100 and a little of the 70. So there's a little bit of both. So it's kind of complicated and I'm hoping my whites are still a little wet. So I'm gonna come in and start to lay in some of these darks. And I'm, I keep pulling a little more on my brush as I pick up some of the white so that um, I am not getting too grayed out or too muddy. And a lot of layering, find myself. So these are kind of getting put over some of the white wet paint. I'm gonna shift to a 70 and you can see here where the palette is already made. I'm not having to mix, I'm just getting to look at my subject and make some um, decisions as I go. I'm gonna thin it a little. I'm gonna layer like I did in some of my tests. Go back to my darks. Again, I'm gonna try to work fairly quickly so that I can kind of activate some of these darks when I go back in with my highlights. I'm trying to find some bold areas. So here's this tulip, here's this tulip. So there's some darks back in here. kind of added or grabbed a light. I'm switching some of the values. Creating some little flyaways. I have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna kind of scoop off some of that value and I keep it near where I think my 70s are, or whatever color was mostly on my brush. If I get a little too yucky, I can again scoop out some of that paint. There's a lot of paint in that brush. I don't know if you can see that. There's quite a bit. So I'm gonna keep that kind of there. Um, I think I'm gonna switch. I have a light brush that I had going from before. So I'm gonna take that and now I'm gonna start to lay in my flowers. So I'm gonna go back to this pale. So do a couple different value shifts. Back to the pale. I can see some of these old pencil lines down here. I'm thinking I'm going to want some more highlights, but I might have to let it dry just a little bit so that my whites don't get real yucky. There were some tiny little um, detail areas that I'm going to try and put back in. So I'm thinking big, medium, and then small. 
and I'm thinking about my values, trying to have them kind of shift about. Yeah, I think I'm gonna shift to a little bit smaller brush and I'm gonna try to make a couple of these details. I'm gonna actually keep using my um, flats. This is a real cheap one, so the bristles are coming out, so I may shift. Actually, they're all cheap, but. So I've got a pretty stiff, flat brush and I'm gonna try to get a little bit of this detail work to make it feel like there's yet another little layer that's even closer. I'm gonna use some black, I think. And then I'll scoop that off and switch to a white kind of on top of it. I'm gonna use a little bit of the gray and the white for these little berry shapes. Oh, but they'll get lost there. So I'm gonna switch to something dark. a lot. That's pretty thick. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'll try another little round of these little guys. Think about my visual balance. I'm kind of twirling my brush so they go in different directions so they're not all perfectly repetitive. Have them dissipate out a little. Scoop it off and I'll switch to the white. I feel like maybe that symmetry it needs like one more little pocket of something small so I'll just to balance it And then I think I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'll come back and I'll do some detail work with this circle back here and with these. And I think I'm gonna put an edge in between that subtle transition. Um, I also will put another layer of straight white, very clean white up over the top of some of the highlights. But I think that's it um, for now and I'll have to walk away so I don't make it too muddy. I have a little squirt bottle um, and I'm gonna just squirt my palette a little bit. Um, and I could put over it like a little um, Tupperware box or a big cake plate or something to seal the air if I don't walk away too, too long for it. Um, in my studio, like if you really love to start painting, um, I use one of these. It's a stay wet box. I use it for both acrylics and oils. I don't know what's in here. These are acrylics. Um, but you can see that it's like a Tupperware box that keeps your paint wet. And my paint in here will last about a month um, before I need to change it out. Um, so those are pretty nice. Okay, so I will pick back up this video in a little bit after it dries to do a little bit of detail work, either with um, some little tiny brushes, like making some hard edge spots or with some felt tip markers. Okay, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.